Hello Moglet, so I've recently been digging more into the game's mechanics, as I usually do once I get a bit more familiar with them and more comfortable with them. And one important thing I realized, which I feel like I should have realized a lot earlier, how different stats, namely on the uh, weapon and artifact, affect your overall strength. Uh, we're mainly going to be talking about the difference between attack percent and elemental percent, and this is only really found on the uh, goblet here. So here we have a 34.8% electro damage bonus and a 34.8% attack bonus. Which one is better? I mean, as far as Kachin goes, she does mostly electro damage, right? Her ult does electric, her E does electric, she even imbues her basic attacks with electric after doing her E, she can do mostly electro, so you'd think automatically, yeah, sure, electro damage bonus, best. If you weren't aware, like I wasn't aware for a while, the attack bonus actually just adds on to your base attack. It does not add into all the other artifact attack percents or the attack percents on the substats, etc, etc. It just adds on to your base attack, which you get from your character's level and their weapon. This white number is your base attack. What is also interesting is it kind of depends on how high you are, what's better or not. For example, once you get to AR40, you can raise your weapon to 80. Uh, currently on Lion's Roar here, we have 449 base attack. We also have 37.7% attack. Now, quick question, what actually gives you more power here? It's the base attack. The attack percent you can see here as only 277. So honestly, the flat number here is twice as powerful as the 37.7% attack. And that's always something to keep in mind. But since we are AR40 and can level up our sword this much to level 80, giving us that massive, massive base attack, we're gonna go ahead and just switch that to like, I don't know, this that gives us defense percent and base attack. Now we have 325 base attack. We're gonna go ahead and re-equip Lion's Roar and we're going to throw on all of our artifacts. We currently have about a thousand attack. So let's go ahead and do that. We are using this flower, this feather, this hourglass, this goblet, and this crit rate helmet. And now let's go ahead and go back out and take a look at our attributes. We have 2,000 now. We're getting about 1,000 attack from our artifacts. This includes substats and everything. Everything in artifacts, including the flat attack number, so this attack plus 11, goes into the green numbers. The only way to increase the white number is through weapon, and character level, that's it. You cannot increase it any other way. And this is what all attack percent stats base themselves on. So it's the whole additive versus multiplicative thing, you know? And for the longest time I was just like, yeah, attack, attack, crit. That's just how you build a DPS, right? But you do have different options. So if we, for example, take off this 34.8% cup, we can look at our stats again and they only dropped, you know, less than 300 points. So as far as attack percent goes, it only cares about your base attack. At my stage of the game, you know, being able to have a level 80 lion's roar, it's actually not that horrible because the artifacts scale decently well. But for other characters, especially like supports where you might not have their weapon raised so high, it's really not that good. So after thinking about that, I was looking around about what else to give her. But at least on the cups here, we have electro damage bonus. This this is my one and only electro damage bonus four star, so try not to judge the substats too much. It's literally the only one I've ever gotten uh, out of all of these. That's the way the cookie crumbles. I decided to uh, raise that and chuck it on her for now, even though I am sad about losing 5.9 crit rate and 10 crit damage on this cup. I haven't done too much testing with it yet, but we'll get there. And as you can see, when we go back to our attributes, yes, we have 1780 attack instead of 2k. So it's like, well, you're weaker now. But we also have this cool little 34.8% electro damage bonus. It it's just a straight damage bonus for any electro tax. And with someone like Kaching, she's doing electro damage most of the time. And since you actually get the same amount of bonus here, 34.8 electro damage bonus versus 34.8% attack, whereas the electro damage bonus kind of acts as how I assumed attack did, where it's an actual 34.8% damage increase when you're using electro attacks. Straight up attack though is good for those units where you're kind of half using physical damage and half using element damage. So it really depends on the character, but of course in Kaching's case, she's using mostly Electro, which also prompted me to seriously consider actually farming the uh, Thunder set. But yeah, another thing I was thinking of is, is flat attack really all that bad? It's not as bad as I thought now that I know this, and especially when you look at Feathers with their massive, massive 232 flat attack, you know, for a four star maxed one. Like when you consider we lost, what, like 255 or something attack when we unequipped this, and we're getting 232, it's almost the same. You know, unfortunately with Lion's Roar here, it's going to be a little bit hard to test because when they are inflicted with Electro or Pyro, they take 20% more damage. So obviously we would see higher Electro numbers, but the first hit, the one that imbues them with Electro is not boosted. So we're just going to have to do one basic attack and kind of compare numbers. 830, 830, 830. So we're doing 830 on all of these dudes. So what I want to do now is get my Lightning Sword imbued. And now... We are doing 830 exactly because we have no 
electro damage bonus. Now I'm going to leave this place. I want to keep these guys alive. So we're hitting the same exact enemies and switch our attack percent for the electro damage bonus. Now, obviously our physical damage will go down. So here we have the same group of enemies. We're just going to hit one basic attack. Okay, that was a critical, not counting. 736. All right, there we go. Obviously a lot lower as we expected, but now, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit one with electro damage imbued and let's check it. 926. I'm being very careful not to hit one that is already imbued with electricity because then Lion's Roar will proc. And as you can see, we are doing more electro damage than we were before with the attack percent cup. We are also doing significantly less physical damage, but with Kaching and a lot of other damage dealers that can be in their elemental state, you know, also catalyst users like Klee or Mona that are just actually mostly using elemental damage anyway, it's really not gonna matter all that much that her physical damage drops. For mixed users that are doing like half physical, half element, then yeah, if they also have a high base attack, then attack's gonna be better in that case. In my specific case, however, I don't think the uh, smallish damage bump we got from switching justifies switching out the six crit rate, 10 crit damage subs on the attack percent. So I will be sticking with that for now until we find a better electro piece. There's also another consideration if you're gonna be running a superconduct team, which reduces their physical defense. In that case, if you wanna have your character more versatile, then attack would still be better. Physical damage bonus would be even better for a pure superconduct team, like with a razor, but if you have your cryo in your team and are performing a lot of superconducts, then I would actually still recommend attack, even on someone like a Ching that can definitely stay in electro status most of the time, but attack would allow her to deal a lot of physical damage and a lot of electro damage. So it's really up to the rest of your team and preference. If you wanna be more versatile and do decent physical and electro damage, then just go with attack. If you wanna be super focused on doing superconduct, then physical damage is actually the best. And if you're not even running a cryo user in your team, then obviously electro damage bonus or whatever element your character is. But yeah, I suppose that'll pretty much do it. I know this was a little all over the place and perhaps a little hard to follow. So I'm going to drop a little summary here. So in summary, in most cases, yes, you do wanna go element over attack. I would say the only exception is if you are, first of all, a very high level and have a very high base attack or your unit is split in using physical and element damage. However, if your unit is mostly physical, then we have a separate physical damage bonus like this cup here, which actually gives a bigger boost than both element and attack. So, you know, like Razor, for example, if you have a Razor, he's going to want a physical damage cup. As far as hourglasses are concerned, we don't have that many offensive options. You know, we have energy recharge to spam their ults a little bit more and elemental mastery, but that's usually reserved for supports. And then on the helmet, if you want maximum damage, you typically want crit rate or crit damage. I would only ever go crit damage if you got a lot of crit subs and or if you have a crit rate weapon because crit damage, much like elemental percent is just a straight up increase. It doesn't compile onto your base anything. Also, as far as crit rate is concerned, there's a soft cap at 80%. So don't bother trying to get higher than that. But yeah, there it is. I think even the summary was a little convoluted and annoying, but, but hopefully you got something from this anyway. Of course, there are a billion things we can talk about when it comes to character building, but I, I kind of want to just focus in on this one little topic. But if you have any additional thoughts, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Dropping a like on this video if you do enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. If you want to see my future videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell notification if you actually want to get notified about them. Check out my Discord in the description down below. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I'm glad I leave all this crap at the end. Um, <laughs> if there's just like more stuff adding on every few months, uh, thanks as always for watching and until next time.